Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about waveguides, an important component for transmitting electromagnetic energy. Let us begin with a brief introduction of waveguide. Waveguides are structure that guides waves such as EM waves or sound by restricting expansion to one dimension or two. Normally, waves are decreasing according to inverse square law as they expand in 3D space, but waveguides apply physical constraint on waves, hence minimizing the loss. Different types of waveguides are used for each type of wave. The original and most common are hollow conductive metal pipe used to carry high frequency radio waves, particularly microwaves. Usually in practice, choice of structure is decided by the desired operating frequency, amount of power to be transferred and the amount of transmission losses that can be tolerated. Waveguides can also be classified depending on the number of dimensions of energy confinement. Slab waveguides confine energy in one dimension. Fiber or channel waveguide confine energy in two dimensions. Fiber waveguides can also differ in shape. They can be rectangular or circular. Next, let's look at the mathematical aspect, that is, Maxwell equations in a waveguide. Two equations relating electric field and magnetic field are given on the left. In the second equation, we have assumed current density to be zero. Taking Fourier transform of these two equations with respect to time, we obtain the equations given on the right. Del operator is a special derivative and hence is not affected by the Fourier transform. Now our main objective is to break these equations in x, y and z components and equate the two sides. On solving the cross product and equating the components, we will obtain the following six equations. Each equation represents one component of electric or magnetic field in terms of two components of magnetic or electric field respectively. In these equations, del by del z is denoted by minus gamma and direction of propagation is taken as z direction. Next, we have denoted all the remaining components in terms of ez and hz by rearranging the six previous equations. Kc square used in the equations is equal to gamma square plus k square. It is an eigenvalue. So if we have Ez and Hz, we can obtain all other components of electric and magnetic field in a waveguide. Depending on values of Ez and Hz, modes are defined in a waveguide. When both Ez and Hz are zero, it is called TEM mode. If only Ez is zero, it is called TE, transverse electric mode. If only Hz is zero, it is called TM, transverse magnetic mode. When both are non-zero, it is called hybrid or HE mode. Next, let's talk about TE and TM mode in a rectangular waveguide where we assume boundaries at x equal to 0, x equal to a, y equal to 0 and y equal to b. Transverse magnetic modes. For this case, the magnetic field has its component transverse or normal to the direction of wave propagation. This implies that we set hz equals to 0 and determine ex, ey, ez, hx and hy using the equations for waveguide and the boundary conditions. We have solved for ez and later determine other field components from ez. At the walls of waveguide the tangential component of E field must be continuous and in this case they will be going to 0 and thus this sets our boundary conditions. By substituting kx and ky we obtain the propagation constant. We have three possibilities depending on k, m and n. Cutoff gamma equals to zero. The value of omega that causes this is called the cutoff angular frequency. The cutoff angular frequency is the operating frequency below which attenuation occurs and above which propagation takes place, even ascent. Beta equals to zero. In this case, we have no wave propagation at all. These non-propagating or attenuating modes are said to be even ascent. Propagation alpha equals to zero. This is the only case when propagation takes place because all field components will have the factor e raised to the power minus iota beta z. 
in the te modes the electric field is transverse or normal to the direction of wave propagation we set ez equals to 0 and determine other field components ex ey hx hy and ehz from maxwell's equation of wave guide and the boundary condition as we did for the tm modes the boundary condition are obtained from the fact that the tangential component of electric field must be continuous at the walls of the waveguide imposing these boundary condition we can get the value of hz other field components are easily obtained as they were obtained for te mode each set of integer m and n gives a different field pattern or mode integer m equals the number of half cycle variation in the x direction and integer n is the number of half cycle variation in the y direction for each mode characterized by a set of integer m and n there is a corresponding cut off frequency tm mode if m comma n is 0 comma 0 0 comma n or m comma 0 all field components vanish thus neither m nor n can be zero consequently mn11 is the lowest order mode of all the tm m comma n modes te mode m comma n may be 0 comma 1 or 1 comma 0 but not 0 comma 0 both m and n cannot be zero at the same time because this will force the field components to vanish this implies that the lowest mode can be te10 or te01 depending on the values of a and b the dimensions of the guide it is a standard practice to have a greater than b so that 1 upon a square is less than 1 upon b square the te10 is the lowest mode the dominant mode is the mode with the lowest cut off frequency or longest cut off wavelength wave propagation in waveguide the field components all involve the term sin or cosine of m pi by a x or n pi by b y times e raised to the power minus gamma z using euler's form a wave within the waveguide can be resolved into a combination of plane waves reflected from the waveguide walls example is shown for te10 mode the first term represent a wave traveling in the positive z direction at an angle theta with the z axis the second term represent a wave traveling in the positive z direction at an angle minus theta the field may be depicted as a sum of two plane tem waves propagating along zigzag paths between the guide walls at x equals to 0 and x equals to a the decomposition of te10 mode into two plane waves can be extended to any te and tm mode when n and m are both different from 0 four plane waves result from the decomposition as a consequence of zigzag paths we have three types of velocity the medium velocity the phase velocity and the group velocity the me- medium velocity is given as 1 upon root mu epsilon the phase velocity is the velocity at which loci of constant phase are propagated down the guide the group velocity is the velocity with which the resultant repeated reflected wave are traveling down the guide phase velocity is given as omega upon beta whereas group velocity is given as do omega upon do beta this shows that phase velocity is greater than or equals to medium velocity since cos theta is less than or equals to 1 if medium velocity equals to speed of light then phase velocity is greater than the speed of light in vacuum thus this violate einstein's relativity theory that messages cannot travel faster than the speed of light not really because the information or energy 
is in a wave guide generally does not travel at the phase velocity information travels at the group velocity which must be less than the speed of light some of the practical applications of wave guide are optical fibers transmission lines transmission and photonic integrated circuit they are also used for maintaining high optical intensities in non linear devices in a radar they find their use in transferring radio frequency energy hope you find this video helpful and informative thank you